I know you guys kind of got a skeleton crew on the defensive side of the ball a little bit right now, but is there signs that you can tell that they've been in the scheme now for about 12 months? There is, and that's one of the goals of spring is to try to identify who your best 11 are and then move those guys around accordingly. So we've got a few position switches that we're experimenting with. Not sure what we're going to do with, with different people yet. But, uh, you know, through all the uh, – the turmoil, so to speak, of, of just not having the bodies. I think Coach Kleiman has done an incredible job of being creative so that we can get good evaluations on everybody. And, um, you know, we're, we're doing a good job with the things that we did a year ago, I feel like. I think that, that we grasp those concepts. And now we're just trying to take the package uh, and expand it, try to take it, push it to different places and, and, and see what we want to keep in the fall. I know Reggie Stubblefield was a bit unique in what he could provide at his size, but do you envision like having that role back in the defense once again? And is Josh Hayes duplicating that? The reason we made that move with Reggie was because he was one of our best eleven. You know, and we we're going to play a lot of people, but you know, we we want to have our best eleven people on the field as much as we can. And and he was. Um, he was buried in a spot where there was other guys that were part of our best 11. And so he was the one that we thought had the most physical tools to, to, um, to be uh, expendable, to be able to move. And right now we're trying to figure out who that guy is that can do that. Is it, is it somebody that plays that position now? Crew Jackson, Keenan Gaskin? Is it Sean Robinson? Is it Khalid Duke? Um, you know, there's a lot of people that we're kind of trying out in those, in those spots right now just to figure out who, who's the best fit. And what are the just first impressions of your linebacker transfer, Brandon Jennings? I know he kind of looks the part, but what's he kind of done on the field to impress you? He does look the part. Well, I'll tell you this. He's, he's extremely physical, got a, uh, extraordinarily heavy hands. Um, he's been nicked up a little bit, so it's been tough to get a consistent evaluation on him. You know, he'll flash on something, and then he's been, you know, bothered with a couple of little things, nothing major. So he's missed a day here, missed a day there, and kind of been in and out. And when you're out and you're not doing those things, if you're not used to doing them, I think it's difficult sometimes to know what you're doing, know where to be. So it's sometimes hard to get a great evaluation on a guy that's playing fast because he's just trying to be right. So he's not playing as fast as he can. He's going to get so much better once he gets consistent reps. Um, I think he's certainly talented. And I think he's going to be a, a great name uh, in the future here. Um, you know, right now, I don't, I don't know if I have a, a great – gauge of where he is completely, other than I think he's got ability. Has there been anybody in spring practice so far that's maybe made a giant leap or, or kind of uh, thrown themselves in the mix? As a returner, I would say, you know, the two guys that we get more evaluation on than anybody are uh, Brendan Mott and Cody Stuffelbean, um, just because they're getting the lion's share of the reps at defensive end. And, um, you know, they're going to need to be, they're going to need to be guys, you know, with uh, uh, Tyrone Tallini moving on and, and Spencer Trussell moving on. And, um, you know, we're going to play a lot of people in those positions up front. And I think that uh, those guys have shown us this spring that I think they can be part of that rotation. And so those guys as returners would be the ones that would jump out at me the most. I know last year, as the season went on, you talked about simplifying things and not trying to to put too much much on with the new defense. Do you feel like you're able to maybe now expand exactly what you're doing right. a little bit? Exactly right. Yeah, philosophically, we want guys to play as fast as we can. And you know, my thing in the spring is spring is a time to test drive some things. So we're looking at a few different looks. We're looking at a few different pressures, uh, a few different things that might have some rules to them. And you know. We've got a few guys befuddled right now, to be honest with you, because uh, they're moving around positions and there's a lot of a lot of new things that we're throwing at them. And what we wanted to do in spring was just test drive those things to see if they are worthy of us running them in the fall. And uh, there's a lot of things that we've stumbled on that uh, that we're excited about. There's a few things that maybe we're not as sold on after you know looking at them. They all look good on the board, but uh, you know now that uh, now we've seen them live bullets, it's just more about what can your players actually grasp and what can they do. Because I don't want to put things in at the expense of those guys having to be taxed mentally and play slow. So. Um, we're going to do that in the spring, and that's OK. But in the fall, we want to be able to take things in the summertime, sit down and say, we're going to keep this, we're going to throw this, and this is what we're going to go into 2022 with. And so we're, we're, uh, we're throwing more at them right now than, than, than we should be, to be honest. Joe, you already mentioned the one transfer at linebacker. How are the other guys, the other new guys coming along? And can you break them down for us? Excited about Will Honus. 
Um, now he's a non-contact guy right now. Uh, I've seen plenty of evidence of his physicality on his on his game tape at Nebraska, but we're excited about him. We think he's going to be in the mix. He's doing some seven on seven things and um, some individual things, and just his his uh, capacity to learn is incredible. Really excited about him. Really excited about Josh Hayes. You know, of course, I've had background with Josh, and I knew what kind of competitor he was. And you know, he's going to be uh, very much in the mix. Um, excited about Kobe Savage. Um, he's another guy that. Uh, has exceeded expectations and will will very much be in the mix. Uh, I think you know Sean Robinson. We're extremely excited about. He's another one that's been nicked up a little bit, but in the limited time that we've seen him, you know he flashes like crazy um, as a as just a super athlete that also incredibly intelligent and you can tell he's played a lot of football. Physical. Um, so I think we've hit on everybody that we brought in, and I think you'll see all those guys on the field next year. As a defensive coordinator, when you're down so many guys on the defensive line, what do you do during practice each day to get something out of that group? Well, I, if you were to cut the question off as, what do you do in practice every day? I'd say I stand like this sometimes. But, uh, no, uh, you know, <clears throat> Coach Kleiman, again, you know, it's, it's his um, methodology of, uh, you know, we're going to go team for a certain period of time that those guys can handle, and then we're going to do a special teams drill where we can maybe give those guys a blow. And then we're going to go team, and then we're going to go field goal. We're going to go, you know. So we're not, you know, just taxing those guys for an hour and forty-five minutes consecutively. You know, we're trying to get those guys where they can they can manage. Um, but uh, um, you know, we're, we're aware of that individual and Coach Wyatt and Coach Tuias Sopo are doing a good job of just taking care of those guys and individual. You can't, you know, in the individual time that you do have, you can't just go bashing heads with each other. You know, so it's been a lot more technical. The other thing that I think we're doing a really good job of is, you know, we've got 60 linemen, seven really, that are in the mix that are that are out. And we're doing a number of walkthroughs. We're doing a number of things that uh, are keeping those guys engaged, even though they're not getting reps. And so we're, you know, they're seeing pictures. They're getting lined up. They're hearing closed calls. They're running paths on blitzes. They're just not hitting anybody. And so we're, we're um, those guys will be ready to go in the summer. We'll be full speed again. What's your assessment of guys like Trevor and Nelson that you moved to defensive tackle this spring? <laughs> I appreciate them. Uh, I'll tell you that. I appreciate those guys like uh, like you wouldn't believe. We wouldn't be able to practice without them, you know, and, and the unselfishness that those guys um, have to, to, to do what we ask them to do. That's what this program's all about because quite literally we would not be able to practice if those guys wouldn't uh, have, have made the sacrifice that they did, even though maybe it wasn't in their best interest. I think they're having a lot of fun. Um, I think there's a little less accountability with those guys. They have a little more leeway to make mistakes. But I um, uh, couldn't tell you how much I appreciate those guys. That's what Wildcat football is all about. Is there any one thing that gives you consternation each spring, year after year? Um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 spring philosophically to me is, is about, um, you know, again, evaluating your personnel, getting that part down. Um, it's about test driving new schemes. It's about polishing up some things that maybe you'd want to change from the, the year previous. Um, and uh, getting those guys prepared for the summer, really. And and so I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, I think we're right on target with a lot of things. And, and it isn't necessarily to me about winning practice. Of course, it's competitive and all that stuff, but it's about teaching concepts. And I think, uh, you know, there's going to be position switches that are going to happen in spring. There's going to be position switches that are going to happen in the summertime. There's going to be things that happen uh, in the fall when injuries come up. And so, um, you know, I, I don't get too worked up about the results of um, uh, of every drill. Uh, I just want to see guys compete. I want to see guys play full speed. I want to get our base nuts and bolts stuff uh, in terms of what we believe in, running to the football, playing with physicality, running through leverage. I want to get those things taught to everybody so that when they get together as a true team in the fall, you know, once transfers come in or whatever, however the team gets formulated, uh, everybody understands exactly what we want. And we can go full speed ahead starting August 1st or whenever. From a schematic standpoint with the three-man front, was there – any missteps that you guys made a year ago that you guys have been able to clean up? Looking back at where we were a year ago into where we are now, it's ridiculous. You know, I mean, it, it quite literally was trial and error, you know, with, with blitz paths, with how we want to cover things down, with maybe some of the techniques that we've played. 
And a lot of those modifications came along as the fall went along. And I think now we're able to actually teach what we believe in or what we've come to believe in, if that makes any sense. And so um, and now we're just trying to push the package into, um, you know, one of the things that, that I looked at in the off season was, you know, we weren't as good on third down as we wanted to be. And, um, you know, that, that could come from a lot of different reasons. You know, we're losing one-on-ones, we're not executing on third down, whatever. One of the probably hidden reasons is we had a ton, probably as much as anybody in the country, of third and one to twos. And just quite honestly, the conversion rate of third and one to twos is much higher than the conversion rate of third and three to seven. So what I, what I uh, came to realize is maybe we weren't quite as um, uh, disruptive on base downs as we needed to be, maybe we need to pressure more. Maybe we need to find different looks where we can attack the line of scrimmage a little bit more so that we can get into some of those longer yard situations and get off the field a little bit more. But I'm not willing to do that at the expense of giving up explosive plays. And so we're trying to find that happy medium right now. And with Dana Green, what kind of an increased level of play and le- level of leadership are you looking for from him? He, he's been incredible. He's been incredible this spring. Where he is now as to, as to where he was a year ago, where we didn't really know, right? We didn't know what we had. We thought we had a talented kid, but he had never been in the spotlight. And now just how he's bringing along some of those young linebackers and, heck, for that matter, bringing along some of the, the guys in the back end, the safeties, is, is outstanding. I'm very, very pleased with, with, with Daniel. Kind of piggyback off what you've kind of learned after a year within the new scheme. Are you able to learn a little bit more too, and how to recruit to it a little bit? Exactly better? right. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's um, you know it's unfortunate that that we, we were not set up that way, and we won't be set up that way for for probably three years. But I think um, you know we're, we're figuring out what body types we need. You know, we need more length. I think you know everybody wants length, but you know, quite honestly. Our linebackers are going to have to take on more blocks in this than they did in, in what we were previously doing. And, and you could probably get away with a shorter guy in the box because he just never was going to be put in those situations where he'd have to extend on a blocker and do some of those things in a close quarter. Now, um, you know, we, we see, you know, inside linebackers what, what the body types are that we want. We, we see uh, what, what skill sets a, a safety needs to have that, uh, you know, a year ago, you know, we were still dabbling in the four down and the three down. We were just looking for dang good players. And that's not going to change. But, but there are certain things that go along with being a free safety. I have to have man coverage ability. I have to be able to play a half field. I have to be able to play in the post. Um, you know, we didn't maybe know all those things um, at this time a year ago. So it's definitely changed our trajectory in recruiting. And how close is Khalid Duke, or when do you imagine he'll be there? He's not doing anything. He's doing individual work right now, uh, not doing anything in a team setting. But again, I think those walkthroughs are helping him. Um, you know, he's one of those guys where we're not sure positionally where he's going to land. Just know that uh, he's one of our best eleven, and you're going to see him somewhere. Secrets, obviously. How much different is it going up against a Colin Klein offense every day in practice? Um, you know, <laughs> again, not not giving away too much secrets, but it it, it is different. You kind of. Uh, uh, Colin's a competitive guy, I'll tell you that. And, uh, and we're doing a lot of call it scenarios where it's not scripted, it's just we're playing football. And, uh, and I'm kind of getting used to his rhythm a little bit. You get used to guys, you know, as a, as a coordinator, you're able to cheat some things and I won't give any too, too many secrets in that either. But he's, he's, uh, he's a competitive guy and he's kept us on our toes. He's done some, some things that we haven't seen. Um, he's doing some things that we're going to see consistently in the league, which I um, very much appreciate. And I think we've got a great partnership, us giving him what he wants to see sometimes and, and vice versa. Yeah, uh, Joe, I want to revisit Duke really f- quick because obviously one of your best defensive players and you're without him most of last last season. From your perspective, just how eager is he to be healthy and be able to get that out there in the fall. Oh, he's working. He's working his tail off. Uh, he is, and and uh, you know, it's just I don't know if I've ever seen injuries like this. Um, you know, I look over and we call it the pit. You know, where we put all our injured guys during practice, and that just the amount of snaps that's sitting over there in the pit is just uh, incredible. And you you know, Eli Huggins is over there, and Khalid Duke, and Felix DK and uh, Nate Matlack, and Sincere Mason, and Nick Allen. And uh, boy, you could you could put a pretty good lineup together with those guys over there. And um, you know, our strength staff, uh, led by Coach True, are the guys that kind of orchestrate and run that during the uh, uh, during the practice. And I'm just telling them they're not over there playing Candyland. I mean, they're they're getting after it. And 
Um, you know, I think Khalid as a self-motivator, I think Khalid's teammates realize how valuable he is. And I think, of course, you know, our, our training staff, our strength staff, and our coaching staff understand how valuable he is. And I think everybody's pushing him along to be the best that he can be uh, in the fall. In your words, just how dangerous is he when he's healthy? He's, a, he's, I mean, he's incredible. I think he's just got really good natural feel. Uh, uh, he's got tremendous length. He's got quickness and ability. And we'll see how that looks when he gets back to healthy. But, you know, when he's full speed, I mean, he's got the athleticism of a linebacker. He's got the strength of, a, of an interior defensive lineman. He's a guy that could play inside. He's a guy that could play on the edge. He's a guy that could play linebacker. You know, when he ha and he's intelligent and he works hard at it. And when you're that versatile, you're, you're a big deal. Yeah. Thanks so much. How, how difficult has it been to to replace guys like like Russ and and Jerron and in that safety? Group? You know the the, the uh, extremely difficult. You know, and and I I can't um, commend uh, sincere Mason enough, uh, T J Smith, um, and and the guys that have come in. You know, Josh Hayes has got incredible leadership ability. I think Kobe Savage has leadership ability, um, but more than the on the field play. It's the leadership that those guys provided and the spark that those guys provided. And just, you know, um, those guys have been in and out of the weight room down here as they're in their off season, you know, getting ready for their next step. And just watching those guys go about their business now even is, is incredible, just how businesslike and how um, professional they are and what they do. And so um, it's a work in progress, to be sure. And, and that's, you know, going back to what we talked about previously, I think Daniel Green's helping us a lot in the – um, the leadership aspect, and it'll be uh, it's a challenge when you know when we got uh, so many of those older guys that have played a lot of football not participating, you know to see who's going to step up. But that that is that is the the hurdle that we're trying to overcome right now is who are going to be the vocal leaders on this on this unit, and that's what we'll miss with those three guys that you mentioned. Are there any younger guys that that maybe have haven't gotten a chance to to play that have kind of shown that they're 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 fighting for a, a spot in that, yeah, in that I, top 11. Yeah, I think Omar Daniels is a guy that's, uh, um, you know, flashed consistently. Um, I think Crew Jackson's a guy that's flashing consistently. Um, you know, I think Max Marsh is a guy that's flashing consistently. Max is a guy that uh, was a scout team quarterback a year ago that we've uh, dabbled with at, at safety. And I think he's doing a tremendous job. Um, and Marvin Martin is a guy that's that's flashed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good young talent here. Um, you know, the question is how you know how reliable can they be in the heat? You know, and and so we're just trying to put those guys in stressful situations, and uh, we're doing that on a daily basis, and and they're responding as of now. With that said, um, kind of going with that, with some of those veteran guys on the front out. How has that been then for Tui and for Elalio and those kind of guys? <laughs> well, uh, Damien's been a little bit nicked up also, uh, unfortunately, because he, uh, in the first few days of practice, was showing that he can, he can play with those big guys. Um, you know, so it's, it's a two-man rotation in there at nose. And that's not a fun time. You know, that's a, you know, you're just getting the, you know, triple teamed and double teamed and, you know, slobber knocker after slobber knocker. And, um, you know, I, I really appreciate Titus Tuyasopo and I really appreciate Trevor Stang for, for taking that uh, every day. And th those guys are getting better because of it. And you know, it's not necessarily fair the amount of reps that they're having to take, but, um, but at the end of the day, it's going to make them better players. Crew make that leap. Is there anything specific or a couple of specifics? You know, crew. Um, Confidence for a younger player, it's all about confidence. Cruz got all the ability in the world. He's six four. He can run like crazy. Um, he's not probably as heavy as we would like him to be right now, but um, you know he's intelligent. He works at it. You know he he just sometimes he isn't quite sure. And you know there are times when he just decides he's going to go. And when he goes, he's as impressive to watch as anybody we have on defense. And there's other times where he just has a little bit of. Um, you know, I, uncertainty, I guess, is maybe the best word. And, you know, we're trying to work that out of him to trust his instincts a little bit more because his instincts are good. Um, and, uh, 
you know, but when we go live and we've done that a couple of times in the spring where we're, you know, live bullets and tackling and whatever, you know, he, he, he's always going to make a play or two that's going to make you say, ooh, you know, this guy's, this guy's pretty dang good.